Hi guys, welcome back to London. I don't think it'll focus on that, but welcome to Carnival Street. Hi guys, welcome back to London and welcome to London's Carnaby Street. How can I describe Carnaby Street? It's, um, it's a shopping destination. It's home to many fashion brands, but it's also a brand in itself. It became a, uh, a fashion phenomenon back in the 1960s. A place where people came to shop for the latest trends, food, drink, and to party in the sort of the nightclubs and bars, the surrounding streets. But it became a brand in itself, synonymous back in the 60s with pop culture, I guess with other places like the King's Road, things like the mini skirt, the mini, the car. But um, every time I've made a video about Carnaby Street, people say it's changed. And I guess in some ways it has, everything's changed, everything's changed. Um, it's probably not as cool as it originally was. I guess that crown's gone to East London, places like Shoreditch. But also I would guess the people that say it's changed, maybe in some ways they've changed. Maybe they haven't. I think in some ways, the people that say it haven't, that say, that say it has changed, possibly, <laughs> they haven't kept up with fashions, fads and trends in the same way Carnaby Street has. The street itself is the dedicated follower of fashion. If it's in fashion, it's on sale here. Maybe yeah, for the people that say it's changed, they've immortalised the Carnaby Street for their use forever as it was but it's continually changing fundamentally though selling fashion food and drink it's remained the same it's done exactly the same thing now for five possibly six decades i'm here today to uh to visit a place called kingly kingly court which is full of food and drink restaurants and bars it's just here, there's another side entrance to it, just off of Carnaby Street. I'm here to visit a Japanese ramen bar called Shoru. I can't believe I can't remember where this is. It's actually quite interesting to watch people, the kind of people that walk down Carnaby Street. Yes, obviously young people shopping for fashion. I think there are also people stuck in genres of the past, finding it difficult to reinvent themselves maybe, just reminiscing. Goths, punks, hippies. You can tell from their age, they're of that generation, and from their dress sense obviously. Reminiscing, pointing out buildings that have possibly changed, some that maybe have remained the same. <laughs> Okay, before we go into Shoru, which is here on the ground floor of Kingly Court, I'll give you a very quick tour while we're here. So let's head straight up to the top floor. As the name would suggest, Kingly Court is a courtyard surrounded by three floors of stores. Three stories, mostly food and drink. There's a yoga studio in here as well, and a few shops. It's primarily a food and drink destination. It's covered, it's 
waterproof. This is a nice courtyard down the bottom. It's a nice way, to, nice place for people to come and uh, enjoy food, drink, or they're shopping in Carnaby Street, the surrounding streets. Considering the size of it when you're in here, it's incredibly easy to miss Kingley Court. There's an entrance from each of the surrounding streets, but they are simply small alleyways. From the streets outside, you'd have no clue this courtyard and all of these stores exist within. Down the little unassuming walkways that lead into here. The great thing about Kingley Court and all of the streets that surround and intersect Carnaby Street is the real eclectic mix of shops. There's a lot of big global brands, but there's also quite a few small independents. It was home to Shoru Raymond Park, where we're headed. We are in the heart of West End shopping here though, so on just these few streets there are something like in excess of 50 brands, flagship stores, global brands in some instances, but I guess due to some of the old stores, uh, the old buildings they're in, they've got relatively small square footage for retail, so you get a number of small independent businesses in the mix too. If you want to be part of pop culture, this is the place for brands to be seen and aspiring brands to attend attempt their emergence into the global mainstream. Okay, this is why I'm here. Welcome to Shoru Japanese Restaurant and Ramen Bar. I've ordered uh, ramen and green tea. Shoru specialise in tonkotsu ramen, which in English means pork bone soup noodles and that's what this style of ramen is all about, the soup. Each batch of soup takes 12 hours cooking pork bones to release enough collagen, fat, marrow and calcium from the pork bones to emulsify into a delicious soup which has these, these little telltale pearls and beads of goodness on the surface to which you then add your own choice of noodles and delicious toppings. I've ordered the gyoza as a side, they're just little pork filled dumplings. Here they come on a cast iron, sizzling on a cast iron skillet. Now this is going to be the first time I've used chopsticks this year. Um, it's like riding a bike, you never forget how, but like riding a bike, if you haven't done it for a while, you're quite wobbly and quite funny to watch. So this should be quite amusing for you. Today I've gone for the Kotarai Hakata Tonkosu Ramen, which is slightly richer, thicker and meatier Tonkosu broth compared to the standard signature 12 hour pork broth ramen and it comes topped with char su barbecue pork belly double egg in this one, mushrooms, spring onions, sesame, ginger and seaweed. It looks incredible, unfortunately the camera won't do it justice. Because it's rendered from collagen and marrow and calcium and fat from pork bones, it has an incredible luster, a sheen, a pearlescence I guess. I have a thing with chopsticks. There have been periods of my life where I've had to use them every day, 
and other periods where I've used them very regularly. I've become quite proficient at eating with them. But let's try and pick up this egg. Yep, as you can see, no chance. I mean, eggs are quite a tricky thing to pick up with them, but yeah, there are times in my life where I've become really proficient, second nature using chopsticks. But if I don't use them for three or four weeks, a few months, I completely lose it. By, the, by halfway through this meal, I'll have completely regained it. By the end of the meal, I'll be confident enough to take on a bowl of Cocoa Pops, but I just lose my chopstick proficiency if I don't use them frequently. And I just find it, I guess, slightly strange. I don't believe if I didn't use a knife and fork for a few weeks, or even a few months, I would lose my ability to do it in the same way I do as chopsticks. But like I say, I regain it almost as quickly as I've lost it. So uh, let's dig in and try not to spill half of this down. Here. this video this vlog if you did please hit the, uh, the thumbs up like button and if you'd like to be first to see my new films the subscribe button toodles secret underground bar here and on the ground floor here there's also a fellow youtubers store was there a store with a youtube channel um crumbs and crumbs and doilies who bake make and sell cupcakes among other things you can check out their youtube channel Thank you. 